Well, thanks for the nice introduction and uh, thanks for the opportunity to show a 3D script uh, here at the first Mises BIM user meeting. In the next couple of uh, minutes, I'd like to show you a 3D script. First of all, what it is, what the motivation behind it is, how you can use it either locally, which means interactively, but also how a 3D script can be used to render 3D animations in batch remotely on a dedicated processing machine in case your local computer doesn't have the required capabilities. So here we go. So whenever you have created uh, animations, no matter if in uh, 2D or in 3D, you most likely used an approach which is based on uh, keyframes. And this means the user interactively sets up rendering parameters and transformations at specific keyframes along a timeline. And then the rendering engine interpolates in between to create uh, smooth transitions uh, between these keyframes. Uh, now, keyframes are intuitive to use, but uh, even for animations, which may look trivial at first glance, uh, keyframes might become impractical, as you can see uh, with a simple example. Imagine an elongated object, uh, just like this uh, intestine image that I show you here. And now let's say you'd like to rotate it uh, around its vertical axis. And uh, at the same time, you want it to turn slowly towards you. Uh, now think for a moment how many keyframes you would need. You would actually need uh, several keyframes along each horizontal rotation. Um, and um, you are, in order to, to get a smooth uh, animation, you would need to subdivide it, each rotation precisely into subsequent uh, keyframes uh, to, to achieve that. And now imagine you not only want to uh, get these two rotations at the same time, but you also want to accelerate at the beginning and you want to slow it down so you get some kind of non-uniform movement. So doing that with keyframes uh, can be really tedious. You need quite a lot of them and it's quite some effort to set them up. And so we were thinking about a way to uh, to basically to tell the software what the animation should be. So that's a key problem, how to tell the software what, the, what to animate, what the animation should be, uh, and uh, not using keyframes. And the only requirement that we had was uh, it should be intuitive and it should be usable by end users. So it should not require any programming language. And our basic idea was uh, to tell a software in uh, English sentences. And uh, this was basically the start of 3D script which uh, implements this idea. So it is a software for 3D animation that is not based on keyframes, but instead just normal human readable text uh, describes and fully specifies individual transitions. Like uh, here's an example. So this could, uh, for example, be from frame zero to frame 720, rotate by 720 degrees horizontally. And uh, this sentence would now mean we create a movie with uh, 720 frames. And within these 720 frames, the object rotates twice, so 720 degrees, horizontally around its vertical axis. And now we can concatenate several of these sentences. And uh, if it's like here that they act in the same frame interval, we can also write them uh, more elegantly as enumerations. And we can add stuff like here, we change the font clipping plane, which is the plane where the rendering actually starts. And uh, now let's just uh, see what this, uh, oops, sorry, what this would look like. Can I animate it? Yes, here. So this is now what, what this uh, animation text uh, would achieve. So we see this twofold uh, rotation, which I've talked before. It's uh, turning with a higher speed around its own axis and it bends towards us and the front clipping plane uh, moves back so that we can actually look inside this intestine and see, see the two uh, tumors which, which are inside. So this is uh, how a screenshot of 3D script, this is what it looks like. And you see it's divided mainly into three windows. So in the middle part here, we have an interactive 3D preview, so you can interact with it uh, with your mouse. You can rotate, zoom, and so on. Uh, on the right-hand side is a control window for adjusting the rendering parameters. 
And on the left hand side, you see uh, the animation editor. So that's the editor where we would compose this uh, animation script. So let's quickly look into uh, 3D script uh, features. So 3D script offers fine grained adjustment of contrast and transparency via a nonlinear transfer function, which affects uh, significantly what the output will actually look like, as you can see in this image here. Now, just quickly, we can uh, have lightning parameters per channel, which give the output uh, a surface C uh, appearance. And 3D script has different rendering algorithms. And we can crop each channel individually uh, in all three axes from two different sides, and also along the viewing direction, as you can see in this last slide uh, panel. And the good, uh, well, the good thing is that really all of these uh, features can be animated using the animation script. And for that, we typically use this animation editor. And here is what it looks like. So let me just uh, show you what this looks uh, in real life. So here you can watch me. And you see the first instruction, I would just say at frame zero, rotate zoom by a factor of 0 0.6. And then I click on run. And I will get the resulting well animation, which is in this uh, case just a still image. And you can see while I am typing that uh, the animation editor is fully auto completion enabled, so the user does not need to memorize anything. But uh, you can easily find out just by uh, letting you guide through the uh, auto completion menus. And so you see, I uh, rotated now uh, the sample a little bit in each direction. And now I say from frame zero to frame um, 90. So within 90 frames, I want to rotate this sample by half a rotation. And whenever I want to see what comes out, I click on run to just get a quick preview. And then I can continue from that. And now comes something which I don't want to emphasize, actually, because somehow it contradicts what I said before, like to not require any programming, but just showing that it's still possible. So you can also include scripts like image chain Marcos in this uh, animation script, uh, which is actually what I'm doing here. So the zoom factor is now a function of time. And it's actually, uh, I put in the equation for a simple oscillation. Uh, of course, I have to remove the zoom factor at the beginning um, for it to work. And then when I click on run now, you can see that we get this uh, adaptive uh, zoom factor here. So this is just a quick demo to see, uh, to, to show to you how this uh, works in practice. And so this was a 3D script and uh, we published it uh, like uh, two, three years ago. Uh, but of course, uh, as uh, as it is always actually the case, even for moderate data sizes, 3D rendering uh, takes a lot of uh, computational uh, power. Uh, and if you have done it before, and we saw many examples in this conference, uh, you know uh, that this is actually the case. And uh, so we were thinking about how we could actually still do uh, 3D animations, even with if our local machine is not strong enough. And so we would like to outsource uh, the 3D rendering. And one way to do so, uh, well, the simplest way probably is to use a shared computer, like physically go there, sit down there and use it. But that's not what I'm talking about here. Uh, I talk about uh, remotely accessing this computer and remotely uh, doing the rendering. And the most uh, simple thing to do is probably to do it interactively using some kind of screen sharing uh, software like a, a remote desktop and uh, use a 3D script remotely in, the, in that sense. And you can do so, uh, but sometimes if your connection is not the best, uh, you may uh, experience some lags uh, which uh, come from the screen sharing. And especially if you want to create animations, it's very important that, uh, that you can uh, precisely time your animation and your transitions. And so that can get quite annoying. And so I'm actually more interested here now in doing the, uh, the animations in batch. So without, well, let's say non-interactively and uh, we are best on a server, on a high power, on a, on a high power server, um, 
which is strong enough. And so uh, we are facing one problem uh, here, and that's somehow we need to tell this uh, server what we actually want the animation to be like. And um, so how do we do it? We could use keyframes. Um, but uh, keyframes need to be created on the client in order to be sent to the server. And to create them, uh, we typically need the rendering uh, engine because creating keyframes is interactive. So we need the renderer and therefore also the necessary hardware uh, on the client. So it doesn't really help. Um, we could use some programming or scripting, but that's what we wanted to avoid in the first place. So ideally, it should be usable by somebody who is not experienced in programming languages. Uh, but actually, a 3D script is the ideal, at least in my eyes, the ideal platform for, for doing exactly what we want to do, like outsourcing and remotely rendering. Uh, because uh, in 3D script, the animation text is intuitively understood because it's in English sentences, even without having a preview. And if we don't need to have a preview, we also don't need a rendering engine. And so in the end, on our client, it's sufficient to have a simple text editor where we can compose uh, this animation text, which is then sent to the server. Uh, and the server can render it and, uh, and then we can get back the uh, resulting animation in uh, form of a video. So we implemented this idea. Um, we called it 3D script server. It's a client server architecture for 3D animation. And it consists of uh, the server itself, a 3D script server, and 3D, uh, three clients, uh, one for Fiji, one for Meru, and one for, uh, for cluster processing. And so let's quickly look into these. So this is a 3D script server. It's implemented uh, like the original um, uh, uh, 3D script uh, plugin uh, as a Fiji plugin, and it's run in the same way, just calling it from Fiji. Um, it's uh, on Windows, it has an additional option to in being installed with a single click in the Windows task scheduler. And so this will then automatically start the 3D script server whenever this computer boots. And uh, which means you could basically always uh, access it from uh, remote. And internally, 3D script server collects jobs submitted by the clients in a queue. And these jobs are then processed sequentially one at a time. It doesn't load the data from the user, from the clients directly, because the client might be connected via, via um, a slow, maybe even metered uh, network connection. Instead, it loads the data from a central location. So either a shared file system or an Omero server. Uh, because now we can assume that it's connected uh, via a fast institutional um, network. And here's a 3D script client, which is a Fiji client. Um, and as a user, you can uh, specify where the server should load the data from. This can, as I mentioned, either be Omero. And in that case, you would need to specify the Omero server and the uh, credentials or it could be a shared file system. And you can specify one or more processing machines. And if these processing machines are connected to the same subnet as the client, it, uh, they can also be detected automatically. So it will automatically find the servers in the local network. And uh, in that way, 3D script client is best suited for being integrated into large MHJ processing pipelines uh, and can, for this purpose, also be called from Fiji macros. The second client is a 3D script cluster, um, which was implemented for rendering animations on a compute cluster, so really high scale. And to this end, we provide batch scripts on GitHub for submitting jobs to the Talk job management system. Um, 3D script cluster is best suited for animating either extended um, time-lapse experiments or experiments with a high number of experimental repeats, because uh, there you can uh, process individual time points or instances independently and in parallel on the uh, nodes of a compute cluster. So here you see it in action. Uh, that's a screenshot uh, which shows 18 uh, jobs submitted uh, to the cluster 
from a single script. Uh, that's our local cluster here in Erlangen. You see five jobs are currently uh, running, but that depends, of course, how many uh, on, on the configuration of the cluster and on the resources on your cluster. And uh, then here, there's uh, the third client, that's Omero 3D script. That's probably most the one which is mainly targeted to the end user. And I would uh, want to show you, like in this screencast, how it works. So I, I'm in the, I'm in the Omero web interface here. So I right click one of the images. These are organoid images uh, that you see here in this collection. I click on open with, and then I can select 3D script. And you can see uh, this is the web interface of, uh, of uh, 3D script in Omero. It's very simple. It has a preview, which will show the resulting uh, animation. It has a progress bar and a text editor and a couple of buttons. And so you see now while I'm entering the animation text, not also in the web interface, uh, the editor is fully auto completion enabled to um, provide a similar functionality as the original uh, 3D script plugin for Fiji. Um, and uh, so we'll just finish entering this text here. So here comes the rotational part and uh, also some zooming. And once done, I will click the render button here and you can see it does the rendering. It saves the results, converts it and attaches it. And here is actually what we created. You see the animation, which will then be displayed. And so the nice uh, thing is really now I can go back to the Omero web interface, select uh, more than one image. So here I select six images. I click on this uh, top right button here on this link, which will give me a link to all six images. I will copy that, go back to 3D script. And now I can click on this little icon here. I can add this link to, to these uh, six images. And when I click on render now, you can see that all these uh, six images will be rendered one after another uh, with the very same script, which means the very same setting. And uh, once it's done, and this were just six, so I can play them together side by side. And I think so in my eyes, uh, the best thing about this is really that it's using the same animation script. So all images have now been rendered exactly identically with the same settings. And uh, that means uh, we can directly watch out for differences and uh, also look for uh, like phenotypical uh, differences here in these images. Well. So as I said, I think uh, three, Omero 3D script is the client which is mostly targeted to the end user. It's uh, direct, uh, directly accessible from the Omero web interface, which means uh, there's no need to install anything, at least not if you're the end user. Uh, of course, you need to install it if you're the Omero administrator. Um, and uh, there's uh, another advantage, which means there's no transfer of input data over the network because this runs directly where the uh, Omero server runs. And something that I haven't mentioned is uh, the Omero web interface and the 3D script Omero uh, web interface is also optimized for mobile devices. So you could now create your 3D animations directly from your mobile phone if you wish. And there actually, uh, it, there's another benefit of having natural English language because entering text in mobile phones can be cumbersome. But here you could even use the uh, voice recognition because it's just English text. So I don't think uh, there's an easier way to create 3D animations uh, right now. With that, I would uh, like to thank uh, my colleagues here at the Optical Imaging Center. Um, I also would really like to thank William Moore from the OME team for his support with uh, the Omero 3D script implementation. And I would also like to thank uh, well, basically all the ImageJ and Fiji developers and the OME developers, because these are really the two platforms which I use uh, daily. Um, of course, I would like to thank all of you for joining today and listening. 
And on my last slide, there are some resources uh, where you find more. I would like to highlight the demo server in case you want to try out the uh, Omero 3D script. There's a demo server where you can access uh, the data which I have just shown you and where you can play with it uh, yourself. Um, yeah, otherwise, um, thanks for listening and I'm happy to take questions.